Good afternoon, Yankee fans. This is, of course, the Simonetti Source. I was having a really good conversation late yesterday that I want to have a chance to talk about a little bit in detail. Basically, I was talking with a friend of mine regarding the Yankees, talking about how they can improve, where they can improve, And we got into a little debate back and forth regarding the starting rotation. As you guys know from my past videos and also from my live chats, I am a huge advocate for the Yankees adding two starting pitchers. Now, the pushback I typically get from Yankee fans regarding my idea of adding two starters is, well, wait a second. Hold on. Stop the press. Susan. What about Montgomery? Hey, great pitch pretty good a couple of days ago. What are you going to do with him? Maybe he's a bullpen guy. What about CeCe? He's too good. He's all right. CC's the man. <clears throat> Stop it. Stop. That's the pushback I get. <laughs> but let me explain one more time why I think the Yankees need two starters. We already know everything else, right? So the Yankees got one of the best records in baseball. Don't know if it's the best. right. It can't be the best right now. So they got one of the best records in baseball. Right? They've done this with a rotation that no one's been consistent besides Luis Severino. Every time Sevy pitches, they're like, all right, you know, this is going to be a good game for the Yankees. And typically it is. Right? CeCe's been extremely inconsistent his last four starts. Tanaka's been inconsistent all year. Uh, Sonny Gray's been inconsistent all year. Right? Domingo Herman been back and forth. Um, nobody's been consistent. We know that. My idea, of course, is adding two starting pitchers. Yes, you're right. It adds more. They got some guys. They got decisions to make. But you can still go with your top three of however you choose. Severino, Tanaka, Sabathia, let's just say for off the top of my head, I might put somebody else in there besides CeCe. But, but for now, let's just go that way. You got your two other starters in there, right? From there, the Yankees got double headers coming up. They got uh, additional uh, off days. You can still do things where you can work in a spot start for a six starter every now and then without breaking up that rotation. Would they do that? I don't know. I think if they're smart and really want to win, they don't have a choice. And that's how I really feel. That's what I was trying to explain to the, to, to a friend of mine who is dead heart set on the Yankees just adding one guy and believing that everybody else is going to just turn it around. I don't see that happening. Even if they did turn it around, I'm not comfortable with that team going into the playoffs. The Yankees should enter the playoffs with a starting rotation that they know is going to really give them a chance. They shouldn't have the worry of, well, this guy's been inconsistent all year. Let's hope we get one of those good ones today. That shouldn't be the way it goes. So we got into talking more about players that we would trade for or how we would go about a deal. And his idea is keep the young guys and trade for a Hamels or a Tyson Ross and leave it at that. I like it. I like it. But my pushback then is who are you keeping and why are you keeping? If there's good talent available, why are you holding on to certain prospects and which ones? He mentioned, of course, Clint Frazier. Clint Frazier is going to be the left fielder of the future. I could see it, but again, I can't. I think Clint Frazier is what I was told the other day. His value to the Yankees is as trade bait. We will see. Then we got into the back and forth of what I would like to see happen. My objective, if I'm Brian Cashman... Again, is two starters. I am going to San Diego, and I'm going to Texas. And I'm seeing who is the least amount of prospects I need to give up to get Tyson Ross or Cole Hamels to the Yankees. 
my preference would be Cole Hamels because of the postseason experience. And I know for a fact pitching in New York wouldn't bother him. Do I think it will bother Ross? I don't know. I don't know. Right now he's in San Diego. Totally different world. He has pitched great on the road. So for anybody who says, well, he pitches in a pitcher's park, he's also pitched great in the road. And I know. I get it. I get it. It's somewhat of a weak division. Understandable. You know, Arizona hasn't hit the way they're supposed to. LA's been banged up. I get it. I understand. That's what I would do. If either one of those guys cost you a Tyro Estrada, a Adams, a Josh Rogers, and a lower level guy, not only, but something similar to that, I'd be okay. But one, we're dealing one, two, and maybe a lower level guy, three player package to get one of those guys to the Yankees. I would be cool with that. Then I would turn all my attention to Chris Archer. Now, some of you are acting like Chris Archer is just a decent pitcher. He's overrated. He's not that good. He's not good, Simonetti. Stop. Archer's not good. He's always a four-year A guy every year. Stop it. We like you, Simonetti, but we don't like Archer. He's not that good. I am not dealing good prospects for Chris Archer. That's what I hear. Right? But guys, again, you may knock Chris Archer. You can say what you want about Chris Archer. Here's what I got to say about Chris Archer. He has been consistent. He has been consistent. Has he not? The guy has made 30 plus starts every year dating back to 2014. I get it. The ERA has gone up. I get it. Right? I understand that. So don't start going crazy on me if I say I like Archer, because I do. Let me get into a little more detail about Chris Archer. Consistency, we already know, right? That's not nothing new. We're not working with anything different here. Now... Remember when that ERA was in the the three range? You know, I'll go over the numbers with you guys. So, in 2013, 3.22. 2014, 3.33. 2015, 3.23. 2016, 4.02. 2017, 4.07. 2018, so far, 4.29. Consistent. ERA's gone up, I get it. But now, if you look at his fielding independent pitching over those last three years when Archer had over a four ERA, per fielding independent pitching, his ERA was 3.81 in 2016, 3.40 in 2017, and 3.89 right now. His strikeout per nine has gone up every year besides this year where it has taken a dip. He started off extremely poor. He's getting hot again. He's looking like old Chris Archer. So, yes, the strikeout numbers being down this year is a little concerning. His walk rate is around the same. Home runs per nine is around the same. Uh, Hits per nine is around uh, regular Chris Archer. So... And excuse me if I'm taking some time here. I am looking at some different statistics here. So in 2013, is his only postseason appearance. He pitched against the Red Sox. Did not start that game. Came out of the pen. One and two third innings. Two strikeouts. No runs. Take that with a grain of salt. That doesn't mean anything. Right? So speaking of all that, and Archer's basically the same guy he's been. 
wouldn't necessarily jump the gun and say ace, right? But he's been very consistent of, let's go with a number three. Do the Yankees have a number three starter right now? I'll wait. They got guys that can pitch like a number three. But they have nobody who's performed like a number three. Archer's numbers this year, when you dig in them, are not bad. And he's on a hot stretch. He's He, he looks like he's turned a corner. I think in his last 18 innings, he gave him up one run. So anyway, you guys know I like Archer. I think that's, that's, that's out there by now. Package, what it would take. The Tampa Bay Rays, I'm hoping, I don't think, they are like the Orioles or the Mets, so to say, that they would be unwilling to trade with the Yankees. I don't think they would be that type of club. One, they don't have a fan base that would rip them to pieces, as large of a fan base that would rip them. And two... I feel like they understand they got to take the best players available. The Yankees have that. If they want guys that they can market immediately, that could jump in to help this team immediately, the Yankees have that. Well, go over the numbers. Go over the players. This is the great thing for the Yankees. On the Major League roster, you got guys in the pen. Holder, Shreve, guys in the minor leagues in the pen, Cody Carroll, 